the other thing that's important, uh, besides the goal itself, is what, understanding the why, understanding the reason behind the goal. Uh, so especially with power, the power thing is great because it's a tangible thing. The, the weight on the bar is very tangible. It's very specific. It can be measured. But at the end of the day, the weight is very superficial, and it's uh, it's really not about the number. It's about why. It's about the process. It's about the journey of, of getting there. So I'm going to use myself as an example. Uh, but just really quick off the top of my head, uh, does anyone have a goal they, they'd like to share? That's, oh, yeah. I would like to squat in on Great. So is that, spe is, that, is that specific? Is that specific? Yes. Yes. Can we measure it? Is that attainable? You guys don't know Brandon, but it, I'll, I'll tell you from as a coach, it's attainable. Uh, we're going to talk about maybe why that's important to him. Now, the only thing that I'd like to add to that is, uh, is uh, we want to have a time frame. So why would you like to slide in? Four months. So RPS, November, so you have like a specific date. We don't actually know the date yet, but let's say it's November 16th, 2019. So now that's, that's an example of a SMART goal. If someone says my goal is, I want to get stronger, is that specific? Can I measure it? Yeah, maybe. So the more specific you can get. Now it's really important though, I will say that one caveat to this is that um, the whole point of putting a number on a piece of paper and is to have a target to aim for. Um, would you, I always use this analogy, but like, would you get in a car and just start driving without a destination? Maybe when you were a kid, you were excited that you got your license, right? But besides that, uh, we want to have a destination in mind. So that's why I always say that training without a goal is like driving without a destination. Uh, so that's that's kind of the kind of analogy. So I'm going to use myself as an example. Um, I'm just going to pick one goal. I have several, but my one of my main goals is to squat 800. So I want to squat 800. At 198 pounds, weight class, uh, November 9th. Autumn Apocalypse of 2019, New Jersey. So it's very specific. Um, so the SMART is... Is it specific? You can shout it out. Yes. Is it measurable? Yes. Yes, you can measure it in pounds. Is it attainable? Uh, I squat 800 at 220 pretty handily in my last meet, so it's going to be lofty but attainable. Uh, we're going to go over the reason in a second. And is there a time? Is there a time frame? Or is there a deadline? Just shout it out. Yes. yes good. Uh, so reason. Uh, so so my reason. If you guys have been following along with me for a while, if you're newer, then I'll just kind of I'll keep this short and sweet. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I started to not uphold the values of myself and my gym, uh, and I started to cut corners like a lot of people do. I started to increase my body weight intentionally uh, in the effort of squatting 900 pounds in competition. Uh, I was successful in that goal, uh, but I had to sacrifice a lot of health uh, to get that goal. I was 340 pounds at a point. Um, and it wasn't, to be honest, I was happy I achieved the goal, but I was not happy with how I got there. So, and I was not um, really happy with myself, and I wasn't as fulfilled because I wasn't practicing what, what I was preaching. I wasn't leading by example, because one of the things that we teach here is that we want to, we never sacrifice health and longevity for the sake of just numbers. And we want to be patient and take our time. So for me, uh, one of the reasons that, why I want to squat 800 at 198 is to show people that you can be healthy, you can be strong, uh, now, to be at an elite level, are you always going to be in the optimal health if you're maybe an all-time world record holder? No. Competitive athletics is not inherent but be healthy by nature, but for most of us here, um, I think that you can achieve a good balance, of, and that's kind of a weird word, but you can have a good, I should say, combination of being healthy, having a good social life, and performing at a high level. So that's why I want to set an example for our team. I want to lead by example. Uh, I don't really care. I mean, it's cool to like squat 800 and all that, but the main thing is it's a vehicle for me to help lead my team and show them what's possible. Um, again, just a little more context about myself. I was never really a good athlete. I never achieved my goals as an athlete. It, I worked extremely, extremely hard uh, just to be an all-league wrestler, which is not really that great. Uh, I don't really have great genetics, um, and that's fine. I played the hand I'm dealt the best I can. 
So another good like kind of life lesson is that it's not about the hand you're dealt, it's how you play your cards. Now some of us have a better starting hand than others. Some of us are have a, you know, they're ahead on the starting blocks, and that's fine. But we cannot control that. What we can control is our attitude and our effort and the techniques and the programs that we do. So we want to train what's, we want to train optimally uh, for what's up. And we want to do that consistent, consistently for a long period of time. We're going to talk about bridge habits. So you guys remember what my goal was, my first one? 800 pound squat at 198, right? Four times body weight. So in order to get there, I'm going to need to uh, do a couple of things. I can get very specific with this, but I'm going to need to train. I'm going to need to train my lower body. Three times a week. I do one. Uh, I have a squat day. I have a lower body accessory day that I usually do the day after just because of time. This obviously could be lumped in this day, but I just choose not to, and then I have a deadlift day. So all these moving, so if I need to be able to do that consistently over time in order to have the lower body strength. So if I can check off that I'm training my lower body three times a week, and I hit my, my squat movement, I hit my lower body accessories, I hit my deadlift movement of the week, uh, and then I know I'm good for that. So that's, tra that's training. Number two, nutrition. I do, I'm going to put this in quotes to not offend Stan, I do my vertical diet on training days. I do my modified like carnivore or like a modified keto, low, basically low carb on non-training days. Because I need to lose some body fat in order to make the weight class. Uh, I need, to, I need to fuel my workouts so they're effective, so I need to have carbohydrates, so I have meat and rice pre and post workouts. That's like what I do personally. So that's going to be effective. That's going to help me get one step closer to my goal of squatting 800 at 198. Uh, I also I want to make sure I drink three liters of water a day, get my micros in, uh, and I have sodium, you know, I have my salt tabs and new tabs pre and post workout. So that's my training. That's my nutrition. This has actually been a not so great, so I want some, my, my sleep. I want to get uh, seven and a half to nine hours a night of sleep. I've been having some issues with my shoulder, so I need to work on this one. I've been kind of getting up in the middle of the night. Um, I have my sleep, I have my, uh, sleep routine. So uh, some other things I can be here, like I'm going to shut my phone off at nine o'clock. Uh, I'm going to put my blue light glasses on, so I'm not getting blue light before I go to bed. I'm going to use an eye mask, so I could we could dive into sleep a lot more. But those are the things that I'm doing. So it's a CPAP machine, so uh, blue lights, really important. Blue light glasses. Fo phone off is like huge. Like phone off. If you have a significant other, you could like put them on like do not disturb. Mommy, mom or dad can call you, your wife or husband can call you, so you can do so you can do, do, do not disturb and if there's an emergency you can have certain people uh, be able to access you. Stress management, uh, we're going to do yoga, uh, and I put yoga in quotes, it's more like walk, walking, uh, long, like a long walk, like a recovery walk twice a week. So that's for down regulation, that's for my brain. Um, so training, nutrition, sleep, stress management. Um, these are, I'm going to pick a, a quality. So these are things I need to focus on. So my bridge habit is gonna be focus four. So I can remember these things where I'm gonna focus on four things. I'm gonna focus on my training, my diet, my sleep, and my stress management. So I wanna pick a quality that's gonna help me kind of, cause I'm, my brain gets all over the place, so that's why I picked focus as my quality. So my uh, bridge habit would be focus four. So now we're going to, uh, I want you to think about uh, one thing that you could, what's a, a training habit, a week, it's either a weekly or a daily habit. So what's your weekly or daily habit for training in order for you to hit your goal? What's a weekly or daily habit for nutrition to help reach your goal? What's a weekly or daily habit for 
uh, sleep to help reach your goal, and what's a weekly or daily habit for stress management that's going to help reach your goal.